hello I'm back today I'm going to prepare some reagents that I need to do a common culture based microbial technique so these are test tubes with test tube caps I'm going to put a certain amount of water in the tubes and this technique people will have different names for them so it's total viable counts or most probable number and they tend to use most probable numbers in wastewater or in the food industry if you want to enumerate count find out how many bacteria that can grow are in your food or water sample right for me i work in a lab it's not a food lab or anything like that so i'm going to have next week i'm going to have an experiment where i'm going to have a sample with bacteria in it and so i'm preparing uh, the reagents that i need as i said i'll just fill these with water and uh, put it to sterilize in the giant pressure cooker known as the autoclave and i know it as serial dilution and plating so because i'm not doing wastewater or maybe milk products so if i was doing soil if i wanted to know how many culturables or how many bacteria will grow or can grow based on the conditions or what I'm growing them on are in say a gram of soil I would do serial dilution so you'll see why is it, why it is called serial dilution you'll have your original sample you take a particular amount you put it in it's one ml you put it in nine ml of water then you you shake shake this up pipette it up and down to mix you take one ml from this Put it into the second one which also has nine ml then you take one ml put it in the other one it's a serial dilution it's a one in ten dilution one ml in nine ml ten and once that's done i'm going to select a particular number from the dilution series and then i'm going to take a small volume and then pipette it onto agar plates wrap them up Put them to grow and then once maybe after a few days i'll go in check and then i'll count how many colonies of the bacteria have grown on that plate so let us prepare the water and i have a manual pipette filler and i have a 10 ml disposable pipette so let's see zero to nine and then from the nine to the very tip, that's also one ml, so it's a 10 ml. And I'm going to put nine ml of water in all the tubes. So I can either pull it up to the zero, release it onto the nine, or pull it up to the one and then release everything into the test tubes. And I have some distilled water that I got from the Milik or DNS water that I got from our Milik station. So let us go. I'm not wearing gloves for this part because I'm doing it outside and it is not sterile. Okay. It's probably easier to remove all the covers. sitting right on the meniscus that there's a curvature on the, the bottom of the surface and it's sitting right on the zero and so this is 10 so I want 9 so I'm just going to release this to the one and then release the entirety into each tube there we go
I'm going to put it across each of them so that way I know that they didn't open during the autoclaving process or someone did not open them. So it's just across a part of the lid and the neck of the test tube. I'm going to slightly unscrew it because if not, if it's on too tight, the pressure will build up in the autoclave. And poof. Time to go to the autoclave. The sterilization cycle takes about an hour 10 minutes. Once it's done, I will remove the test tube wrap, put it into the sterile biosafety cabinet in where I'll work. And I have already labeled the base of the petri dishes that I'm using. The tubes that you're seeing at the front with the blue or cap and uh, I have the sample that contains my microbe. I'm removing the autoclave tape from the test tube. I am going to use one ml or a thousand microliters. So to see the 1000 on my pipette. Then I'm finding the tips that work for that pipette. I will then take one ml of that sample. Use the vortex to mix it, but don't use a vortex. It's better to pipe it up and down to mix. And if you realize that I'm keeping the caps tuck between my pinky and my palm and I'm flaming in between, so that is the aseptic technique. And I link the video that I talk more about aseptic technique. And it's one ml from each tube. This is a hockey stick. You flame it, let it cool, and then I'm going to take 100 microliters or 0.1 ml. And from each sample, I'm going to put it onto the plate, use the flame cool hockey stick to spread it across the plate, flaming the hockey stick in between, and you sterilize the hockey stick or glass rod by dipping it in ethanol, then put it into a flame. I am not using an open flame because that would disturb the airflow of the biosafety cabinet. So I'm using a back incinerator which has a glowing orange on the inside that gets really hot. And I'm just repeating the process where I put one ml into the other one, one ml into the other one, one ml into the other one, and then I pipe it onto the plate and spread it around. Once I finish plating the samples, I will seal the plates using paraffin. I am decontaminating my tubes using 10% bleach. I could autoclave it, but it's not the energy that is required, like the electricity that is required to use the autoclave isn't worth it for these small samples. I will incubate them at 25 degrees Celsius because the particular microbe that I know is in it tend to grow best at that temperature. And if you realize that I'm incubating it face up for a bit, and then at the end of the day, I'll twist them over so that there will no contaminants will drip down onto the base of the plate with the agar. And in a few days, I will check to see if microbes have grown. And if they have, then in the next video, I will show you how I go about enumerating or counting how many microbes are in my sample and the formula that I use. So stick around.